Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Bipelo and I am with the gorgeous, the spiritual Mom Rudy. I'm joking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm with the founder of Beauty of Transparency, Your Purpose Project, the YouTuber, the wife, the mom, the woman of God, Tiseto Selekwe. Po 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 po. Hi everybody. How are you doing, sis? I'm great. I mean, I just got ordained on your channel as a mom of <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So we're going to be talking about all things prayer, faith, trusting in God, healing, yeah. forgiveness, forgiving yourself and mental health. Yeah. Um, and we'll see. We're very open to talking about marriage, whatever else comes up. Um, we'll talk about that as well. Um, sure. So the very first video that I watched of you yeah. on your YouTube channel was about excommunication. Do you want to maybe explain what that is, just okay. briefly, right. and then how you went through that? Okay, so just to quickly like explain for those who don't know what excommunication is, is mm -hmm. if you are part of a body of church, mm -hmm. and there's obviously disciplinary policies or whatever that you need to follow, right? Yeah. If you don't do that, there are procedures that you go through, and they cut you off from serving. Um, some churches actually cut you off from attending church sure um but my ex for my from my experience or what i've went through they cut me off from serving and uh, yeah i was literally part of the chairs sure from being a worship team le leader minister mm -hmm. to yeah being out of the whatsapp groups hey they cut me off for real sure yeah so um, at our church, we're having this, you know how, like, word of the year? Yeah. So ours is intimacy, increase, influence, yeah. and impact. Yeah. And the big eye that I'm focusing on is intimacy. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to have this chat with you about mm. having an intimate relationship and a passionate relationship with God, right? Yeah. And sometimes when we look at God and we look at the church... Yeah. We can sometimes think it's one thing. Like if the church treats me badly, yeah. then God doesn't love me. Or yeah. if the church treats me badly, then God, there's something wrong with God or I'm letting go of that. Yeah. So with everything that happened to you, so um, falling pregnant out of wedlock yeah. and then being removed by the church from serving and everything, yeah. um, how have you still been able to maintain a passionate and intimate relationship with God? Yeah. So just to give you context, so mm -hmm. before I, I got excommunicated, obviously I got excommunicated because I was pregnant. Mm. Before getting pregnant, obviously I, you know, mm. partu partook in a fruit that was only meant for married people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. But before mm. all of that, I had a relationship with God. Mm. I, and I know that a lot of people want to say that only people who fall in the faith, who backslide, are people who don't have a relationship with God, which is true. It's, it's not true. It's false. Mm. Um, I had an intimate relationship to some extent with God. And prior to everything uh, that happened, I was grieving the mm -hmm. loss of my dad. And that is the one that made me kind of put the Holy Spirit in the back seat sure. a little, um, without me knowing unconsciously, yeah. because I mean, you're going through so many things. Yes, I, I prayed, yes, I, I checked in, but I wasn't as, you know, yeah, tight as we used to be yeah holy spirit and i so when that happened um for me it was like okay i understood um the the, the processes that the church had to take i came from a background where my ministry started way before i fell pregnant mm. of healing and all of that i've mm. seen how m my friends back at home would fall pregnant they'd be cut off and never come back to church yeah so i had to come to a point before that where i understood that the church is not god sure although the church needs to mirror a relationship between christ and us right sure. so when i when that happened it didn't I wasn't hurt by the fact that I got cut off. Mm -hmm. I was hurt because of the actions thereafter. Mm. So it didn't move me away from God because um, the Bible says in John that, you know, when Christ came, he came with grace and truth. Mm. You cannot preach grace 
and leave the truth behind. Yeah. Because then you're preaching and like like a missing story. Mm. God doesn't just like grace will tell you, I mean, the truth will tell you you've done something wrong, you need to go to jail. And grace will say, um, I'll give you it will say two things. I'll mm. give you the strength to walk through the journey in sure. jail. Because grace doesn't necessarily say you're not gonna go to, to jail. Mm. But grace can say, listen, we bellow I can't take you to get to, to jail because you're going to be far worse than what you were. Yeah. You know, so I had to know that, okay, in this stage, God wants me to go through it so that when I do preach about the brokenness, the church hurt, mm-hmm. it comes from a place of experience and mm-hmm. compassion. So I was hurt, yes, by the church, mm-hmm. but not by God. Sure. So I was able to cushion myself um, and, and like lean on God, mm-hmm. but it was difficult for me to go back to, to fellowship mm. because I was like the Christ I went, cause I grew up Catholic. Yeah. And when I went to like a charismatic church, I said, I wanted to see the, this Jesus and, and, and God they speak about in the Bible, mm. you know, which I didn't see in my previous churches. Mm. Right. So I was like the God and the Christ you're preaching right now in this season that I'm in. Yeah. I don't relate. Sure. So my problem was then cutting off. I then cut off fellowship. Mm. I was like, Ugh. No more ministry, no more, no more ministering in pulpits, no more being friends with pastors. Mm. Uh, I go to church, nobody must see me, and I must go out. And I literally was church hopping for a good two years. Yeah. Going to church. If they're getting too familiar, next church. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Wow. So then in the midst of all of that, how do you then start your be- beauty of transparency? Yeah. And how do you start your purpose project? Okay. So, um, beauty of transparency, I can say, started way before I fell pregnant. Mm. So, I'm a firm believer that you go through things so that you can help others not to go through the sim- or similar things. Mm. And I'm big on experience gives you compassion. If yeah. I was to sit here and tell you I was raped, I was this and this, and you come here crying because you were raped, you're more gonna you're gonna relate to me more than a person who's read it in a book. Yeah. Experience can teach you more about compassion than a book can. Yeah. So I I started the ministry way before I fell pregnant. Mm-hmm. So that's what made um it's difficult for me to even go back to church because people knew me as a person who preaches purity, truth, grace, and then now I'm pregnant, and then now it's like I'm walking around with the cloth of shame, you sure. know. But the ministry itself started way before that. Mm. It started as a ministry of I want people to come into a place where they can openly speak about what they're going through, yeah. and no one can judge them, mm-hmm. and they can find the truth and grace mm. in the same place. So, um, and it's all about reintroducing the God who pursues you in your mess, mm. who heals you and restores you completely. Sure. And when I was going deeper into it, God was telling me that healing is not only for like just inner work. He wants to heal more than just yourself, but your family. And when you speak family, you're speaking finances, you're speaking everything that everyone struggles with and sees Mm. as a brokenness. So your purpose project comes from a place where God is like, I want to heal people and send them into the marketplace healed. Mm. So start businesses from a point of a healed place, you know? Yeah. So your purpose project is like the business side of um, the beauty of transparency. So we go through a journey of how to start your business, but having Christ as your center. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So in, I've watched a few of your videos. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I said it like on air or off air that I was like really preparing for this. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, But I watched a few of your videos and you spoke about, was it Mam Batavile? The wrong might be wrong. The name might be wrong. But how do you then reintroduce yourself to fellowship? Because in as much as we saying, okay, well, God himself I'm still good with him. Yeah. We still need f- the fellowship of the saints, right? Yeah. It's in his word where Apostle Paul is telling us, do not neglect the gathering of the saints. Yeah. So how do you then reconcile and say, do you then just start over and go to a new church where nobody knows you as a yeah. minister and you're like, I'm just going to be anonymous? Yeah. Do you go to like a mega church where nobody, I mean, they'll know you, but like you'll have to be intentional about yeah. them knowing you. So how, how does that happen? So when I say God pursued me, sure. this is the story. I was at a point where I've written myself off. Mm. And as much as yes, I made a conscious decision to leave, but I had written myself off as a minister in the mm. church building. 
you know. So God really pursued me through Pastor Batavile. She, we didn't know each other, met yeah. her at work. I was working in a certain place where she was working as well. And I was pregnant and she told me point blank, hey, dude, um, I think you're too big for this place. Um, you need to leave. Sure. You need to go. Literally, it was at a point where I needed to, I was trying to figure out, should I leave work or not, mm. you know? And when she said that, I felt like God was seeing me mm. in a place where I thought, like, I was a mess. Mm. And, you know, when you are when you are walking around with shame, you, you, you hold on to the mistakes you've mm. made. And the pregnancy or the sex before marriage was not the first mistake I've, I've made, you know? So I, I then went back and picked up all the other mistakes and walked around with that shame. Sure. And one day I just woke up and I was like, oh, let me go visit ba- ba- Pastor Batavile's church. I didn't mm. even know that she was a pastor back then. I just thought she was. She went to the church and mm. it happened to be close to me. And then I went there and, yeah, the rest was hi- history. I sure. went to a church. The one thing that I, I, I tell people about getting a church is that you need to get a church that aligns with purpose, mm. with your purpose. I went in there and it spoke about healing. It spoke sure. about restoration and inspiration. And I'm just like, this is home. This That's is where, amazing. Yeah. But I didn't, one thing that I know that a lot of people ask me, I wasn't mean or like snacks to my previous church. Mm. Yeah. Because I was just like, I just left gracefully. And mm. for me, I, I left, it was in Pretoria and I came to Joburg. It just made sense not to go back. Mm. So, Yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay, now let's talk about trusting God. Yeah. Um, so a large part of your story as well is trusting God. And I always say this, like, now that we're talking about intimacy with God, that there's a price you'll have to play, pay for proximity. Like, if you want to get close to God, you have to pay a certain price, right? Yeah. When you get close to him, he'll tell you, well, that 10,000 rand that you were saving for this, give to this. Um, yeah. That hour that you wanted to go watch this, pray. Yeah. That, you know, so you left your nine to five. Yeah. And you started your own thing, right? So let's talk about that, that journey of trusting God enough to do what seems to defy uh, world standards, yeah. right? I need a job. I need a nine to five so that I can have financial stability. Yeah. I just got married and this is the worst possible time to ever, sure. exactly, to ever leave my job. But God is pulling me god is pushing me and i know for sure that he's saying i need to leave yeah. so i think people who know me will tell you that i i'm generally a big faith girl mm. like guys i if you could sit here and we say we're having a planner for beauty of transparency and i say i want sarah jakes to the to be the guest mm. the guest speaker i would be the one who's, who tell you that it's going to happen. Sure. So I've always had great faith in my call and in what God can do. Mm. But when it comes to the job part, I mean, that's leaving comfort. Yeah. That's like I knew every month I was receiving a certain salary sure. and it, 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 went, it was not as much, but mm-hmm. it went a long way. Mm. But when it started becoming uncomfortable, mm. when it started becoming a drag, mm. not because I'm not hardworking or anything, but because I was literally in a, I was a fish out of water. And I was like, Lord, sure. it took me two years from mm. the word, from when I got the word. Okay, I got the word before I even received my first job. Yeah. That this nine to five thing is not really where yeah. I want you. I want you here, you know. And I was just like, but le- we just got married, like mm. you said. We need to just at least, and then I'll move. Um, yeah, and then when God was like, I need to place you in a place that is here, mm. but this place is, is, is pulling you back. That's where he used Pastor Vatavile mm. as, you know, another voice to say, um, it's time. It was time, but it took me 12 months from sure. that day to actually write the resignation letter. Mm. Another three months to actually take that resignation letter to my boss mm. because it was... It was hectic. You find you fight with flesh. Trusting God doesn't mean that you don't. It's not difficult. Yeah. To choose God. Yeah. I always say that. Always go away. The voice of God leads you. Mm. But that doesn't mean in the leading you won't find rocks. You won't find. You know, it's just gonna be smooth. Just because I heard God, it means like after two months I'm gonna be a multimillionaire. Mm. Nah, you know. So I had to believe that He's brought me this far, mm. and if He's the one who said it then he'll see me through it. Yeah. And I put that resignation letter without a plan. Sure. 
God was my plan. Mm. Literally. Was mm. like, okay, you said I must leave. Let's go. Sure. I had no plan. My trust, my faith was in him. Obviously, I had consulted as well. Mm. My husband and my spiritual parents as well, that this is what I want to do. And yeah, I think I think the support also gave gave me the courage mm. to be like, okay, let's do this. Sure. That's amazing. That's amazing. Hardly. It, it, I mean, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. But I I think I really started saying this thing, not recently, but last year, that his will is the safest place I could ever be. Oh, definitely. Like, his will is my hiding place. Because I know that when I'm in his will, disobedience will leave you as literally fish out of water. Yeah. And I know you use it the other way, but I'm just saying it the yeah. other way. <laughs> because you I won't you. have... It's almost like... You have nothing backing you because yeah. you know that you're not where you're supposed to be. Yeah. You can't say, well, God, and he will, you know, because mm. he's a loving father, but yeah. his will should be your hiding place. Yeah. So let's get back to talking a little bit about mental health. And I know this interview is a little bit all over the place, but yeah. you recently wrote a post yeah. that um, a year ago, I think, you were at a psychiatric hospital maybe a few months i don't know yeah, yeah no um and how has your journey with mental health been because it's a very tricky subject in the faith mm-hmm. where it's almost like god's sovereignty versus western medicine yeah. which i personally don't understand i work in the mental health space yeah. right and i'm like we don't say the same thing about physical health right about physical health it's like dude only diabetes take your yeah, insu- yeah. insulin what's yeah. wrong right and with mental health we're a little bit it's a little bit it is different yeah. right because it, it's your thoughts it's behaviors it's things that we can't see or touch pain yeah. that is elsewhere yeah so how has your mental health journey been with all the hurt that you've been through yeah. as a minister that's at beauty of transparency is there sometimes that pressure to say, but I'm the minister, I should have it all together, figured out. Is there that pressure? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that pressure comes with just being born again mm. and being Christian. Sure. Because somehow we think you get born again and you become, I don't know, the captain of your own ship. Yeah. You know, just because you know what the word says you think you automatically know how to do what the word says. Sure. And if you read, if you really are reading your Bible, you'll know that God is so big on mental health. Mm. There's so many scriptures in the Bible where God is like, renew your mind. Mm. God is like, meditate on this. Sure. God is like, think this way. Mm. And you cannot tell me that does not touch on the mind. Mm. You cannot tell me. Like, I, I, I had to come to a point where I believed God, the integrity of God's word and actually believed what he was saying. If he's saying, I need you to renew your mind daily, I need you to meditate on my, on my word daily. If he's saying that I need you to focus on whatever is good, whatever is, you know, um, trustworthy, what mm-hmm. the scripture says in mm-hmm. Jesus, right? Um, then he knows what he's talking about. Mm, do not be anxious. Do not be anxious yeah. for anything, yeah. you know? And the problem is is, is the, the difficulty of us trusting the integrity of God's word. And I had to break down. Sure. I had to fall apart. Mm. I had to do that so that I can actually go back to the word and say, but you did tell me about mm. this beyond the medication beyond and it's it's the most difficult space you could be in because it's not like i remember going to someone and i was telling they're born again and they are like a pastor somewhere and i'm like i'm suicidal i don't know what to do Mm. i am praying and he was like no you're not praying enough okay how many people have you come across who actually do cry out to god for help Mm. And that one time when they plug up the courage to come to you and say, it's like, it's not going the way I thought it would. Mm. I am praying and you're telling them you're not praying enough. Sure. They'll leave the room and go hang themselves because yeah. clearly they are, you're, if I was to sit there and you tell me, I automatically tell, I take it as I'm not enough. Mm. What I'm bringing to God is not enough for him to heal me. Mm. You know, so I had to literally deconstruct, forget what I've learned sure. and 
listen and I had to be on some I needed to make it make it make sense yeah to me mm. that that's where the intimacy with the holy spirit and and god comes mm. in i want you to make your word make sense with these antidepressants mm. that i have you know and um yeah that's when i went on a journey of i i i i admitted myself mm-hmm. in a in a in a psych clinic because i i knew that uh, it was the end for yeah. me you know and funny enough when i was there i prayed to god i hope i get a a born again psychiatrist and a psychologist because mm. i don't want to have an argument mm. on why i'm praying more than i'm taking your medicine you know and not because i'm i look bad or like or something look down yeah. on medication my mom's a nurse we lived on medication mm. you know and um but it had to make sense for me i need to i needed to bring reality to the scriptures yeah and it was difficult sure. it was tough it felt i remember there were times where i cried and i felt like god wasn't hearing me mm. like i went through my journals i'm like it's five years later and i'm crying about the same thing sure. i and you, the, there comes a time where you actually start counting to god but i do this i mm. serve your children i do that and the I think for me last year I think July was the end for me. I was praying to God. I was trusting God for something for about 6 years, ne, we belo. 6 years and I was crying about it every day. And somebody DMs me and says, "Hey, Sissy, I'm going through one exact same thing sure. that I was I'm going through." Sure. I'm going through one to three, one to three and he leads me to pray for them. Ah, I'm I'm an obedient child sometimes. Mm. So that time I was that child. Mm. So I prayed and I prayed. A week later she comes back with a testimony sure. of things having changed for her. Sure. Did I not throw a tantrum? Sure. And I'm like, not that I'm not happy for mm. her child. Mm. I was mm. like, yo, I, I for the longest of times I lived on people's victories yes. so that I can believe that God is alive. Yeah. Because in my life there was nothing happening. Sure. There was nothing except the fact that I was alive and mm. I had children which I'm grateful for. Mm. So I if if I was to hear a good testimony from you I'd be like God is alive. Mm. Thank you. But at that day th- to that day I was like ah oh, come on. Mm. And he led me to the mini retreat that I had for 3 days I went to the prayer mountain and I was literally laying myself there like oh. I can't live this faked christianity. Yeah. I can't live a powerless christianity mm. and I can't live a lie because I'm trying to uphold a certain standard. Sure. And that's when he was teaching me the importance of being mentally well. Sure. We have therapists, we have doctors not because he's a stupid god and wants to place people in in weird places yeah. just to make them feel good but because he wants to use them mm. so that we can understand him more sure. you know so Jesus in therapy is literally the first thing I'll tell you when you tell me you're going through the most mm. be like go to therapy and I'll do the Jesus part with mm. you you get what I mean sure. but yeah it's been tough that picture i posted on instagram was actually in december in mm. november mm-hmm. so i went to hospital in november because i was running on low on sure. empty and i woke up in ic i was in icu i woke up 3 days later because i had attempted another like suicide because of something that was happening and the weight was just too much but it found me in a place where i was praying intimately mm. but that one day where my mind was idling sure. go back to the word what does the word say continuously think of these things sure. i i removed my mind for th- from these things that are trustworthy sure. these things that are good these things that are from god that loophole the devil used to say end it all like take a closer look at your life mm. do you think mm. all these things that you're talking about and meditating on are true sure. and landed in hospital three days woke up as an hours in icu and trust me when i woke up i wasn't thrilled i think i made a joke about it but mm. yeah i was like guys i feel like god just like cut me off he's just like I go back in heaven mm. go back to earth and it took me a while to actually wake up and say I'm grateful for life sure and there's no shame in that before I'd be ashamed to yeah. be a christian to say I tried to take my life and I was not grateful for yeah. my life literally it was difficult I was like 
Lord, it means you have something, you know, in me and you want me to do something, which means you think I'm valuable. Yeah. But I'm still trying to figure out if I am grateful sure. for life. But I am now. Yeah. So, yeah. Jesus and therapy. Jesus and therapy. I need to buy that hoodie from, from Jackie, Jackie and Kristen. Yeah, because yeah. Because I, I also am a firm believer in it. Yeah. Um, and I think even in this space, like it feels like I can pour out my whole life story to yeah. you. Yeah. It feels like you are such a safe space yeah. because you are so vulnerable and raw and real yeah. about your own struggles. Yeah. And I can see why healing is your ministry. Because you say, hey, this is what's up. This yeah. is what I've been through. Yeah. What do your devotionals look like? Do you have like a daily devotion, like a time to say, Lord, I'm meeting with you today? Because a lot of people often say, I want to like get close to God, but I don't know how, how to do it, like practically. Yeah. Should I wake up at five in the morning? No, I'm not a morning person. Should I, should I do a night? Yeah. Should I pray before I go to work and after when I come back at night? So what does your devotional life look like? So I used to be um, that kind of person. Mm -hmm. that it really doesn't matter when mm. you do your devotional or how. I'm, I'm now at a point where I, I'm like, it doesn't matter how it looks like, but it matters the time. Okay. And the time, and I mean, I have, in my day, there's like two things that I do that mm -hmm. I know that I set aside for God. The first is in the morning okay. between between. 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. And I have a reason for that um, because I've been studying like prayer watches and whatever. Mm. So the between that time, just to give you context, is the time where God releases um, blessings. It's okay. the time where God, um, there's a scripture in the Bible where Jacob was wrestling. It says mm. Jacob was wrestling with, the, with an angel and, and the angel was like, hey, the sun's about to come up. I mm. need to go. And he's like, I will not let you go until you release the blessing. Sure. Yeah, so I am so serious about my time with God mm. being between that time. So 5 a.m. is good. Okay. Sometimes at 3 a.m. if I don't have any sleep, if I wake up in the middle of the night, mm. and um, I do my devotions there. Mm -hmm. That's the way I command the day. That's the mm. way I speak to God about, you know, um, um, whatever he's giving me in the scripture. And the most important thing for me is to command day because mm. sometimes we wake up into a day and we don't command sure. the day and then things happen yeah. and we are consumed by everything mm. that has happened but if you start your day with prayer you start your day with with your maker the one who changes situations mm. you know that even when some things are going on in your day you've come you've dealt with it already yeah so it doesn't bother you because you've dealt with it already yeah. so my mornings look like a scripture that i'm going to that's going to carry me throughout the sure. day and there's like a method that I use. And then in the evening, that's when like the whole Bible study comes mm. in where I'm like sitting down and looking for Greek words mm. if I have to. But yeah. Sure. Okay. That's amazing. So I, my devotional looks like I wake up at half four. Yeah. And then it's an hour long. Yeah. And I do like 20 minutes reading a Christian book. Yeah. You know what? I love, I'm a big reader. And I love a good cup of coffee. Yeah. So those are, that's the one thing I'm like, oh, I'm excited to yeah. wake up for. Yeah. And I don't know, like, I feel like now I'm at that place where I'm excited to wake up and just spend time with God. Yeah. But for a long time, like, I wasn't. Yeah. And for me, the book was the bribery to say, dude, you're going to read a good book. Yeah. Dude, you're going to have good a good Christian cup of book. Exactly. A good <laughs> Christian book. And yeah. you're going to have a good cup of coffee. Mm. So, like, wake up for that. Yeah. I mean... It's 20 minutes set and then 20 minutes reading his word and then 20 minutes of prayer. Yeah. And I, I time it. Like my yeah. husband's always laughing at me because it's like so, but I need to because at first I used to only pray for like five minutes. Yeah. That's how I could like push yeah. prayer at one time. Yeah. And I was like, I need to grow in this. And this is the time that I have because I still have like work in the yeah. morning and running and all of those other things that I do. So. And it builds discipline exactly it builds exactly. and you need discipline as a child of god mm -hmm. and whoever you are with that you need discipline for yeah. me i i had to i i literally people used to think that i'm a super christian yeah but i think it has helped me so much where i time myself for an hour yeah because the first 20 minutes child my mind's still telling me oh my gosh i'm gonna see peter at yeah work. <laughs> or like oh my gosh did i make am i gonna eat Pray yeah. again, you know. The t first twenty minutes of my prayer time is a lot. Mm -hmm. I have a lot on my mind, and by the time it says twenty five past, I'm no longer mm -hmm. myself. 
Mm. But it, like it, it's very hard during the week or sometimes to actually set aside that one hour. But mm. I'm like trying to force myself. Sometimes it only takes me 15 minutes for my mind or 10 minutes for my mind to shut down and for me to actually be in the prayer. Mm. Sometimes mm. it's less. But for me, I'm always like, okay, let me give myself, I'm giving myself a, a, an hour window mm. so that I can actually give God time to speak to my mind sure. without me a noise that's so good but it's and different I, for yeah other, for people. and i always say that as well like that our relationship with god is very similar to like a marriage yeah sometimes you don't feel in love you don't feel like waking yeah. up you don't feel like oh my gosh you're the best thing that's ever happened to me yeah but doing those disciplines of saying i'm going to spend time with you whether i feel like it yeah. or not i'm yeah. going to be here because it's my daily routine i'm gonna yeah. make sure it's a habit i'm gonna make sure it's literally a ritual for yeah. me and yeah. not being religious necessarily but we need disciplines in our lives in order for our lives to go well but religious re- religion taught us how to go to god so exactly. we can't really cancel it completely sure. so that's the discipline that's yeah. where the dif- discipline comes from that's so good that's so good yeah. how has your mental health affected your parenthood and your marriage child at some point i resented my children sure and i mean i think it's the first time i'm ever talking about it like mm-hmm. this um i just liked my children because mm-hmm. i felt like they were taking so much out of me and sure. i didn't have yeah um mel- mental illness is from the devil yes i don't even want to lie when people say depression and whatever is spiritual i i know it firsthand mm. it is spiritual it is spiritual and yes there are ways and and god has given people wisdom and you know to yeah. put together medicine and stuff to try help regulate mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but it is from the devil himself it's mm. from the kingdom of darkness yeah. and quote me on that yeah like so i had to in t- be intentional build the discipline yeah. to realize that if i fall into this hole mm. my children i'm i'm building a foundation for my children that will leave them in doom sure. forever mm. when i'm gone they'll be battling they'll be fighting this battle that i'm not even trying to win yeah and sure it was difficult mm. it was difficult um I remember my youngest, my my eldest, my my firstborn, my mm-hmm. daughter, was the one who carried, you know, more of my resentment because I feel like I was judging myself as a mom yeah. that I'm not being, you know, the mom I'm supposed to be to her. So instead of because mental illness, I mean, mental illness does that. Instead of you going towards bettering yourself, you pull back. Yeah and child i have to i had i have to be honest and not to be overly spiritual or what but i had to go back to the drawing board yeah. where does this thing come from you know even in my marriage it was sure. like where does this come where does this thing come from it comes from my dad's family line mm. i did my research asked around uh, so many people attempted suicide mm. so many and uh, you can't tell me it's not spiritual yeah when it's it's being passed down like that and mm. when i realized because i remember i have a vivid image of my dad climbing the car in the garage trying to hang himself sure and i'm like i have that image in me yeah that's why i'm living in it sure and he didn't fight it that's why i'm still here to fight mm. it so if i don't fight it my kids I in trouble. Yeah. Like it it came to a point where it, it stopped I just stopped I stopped living. Mm. Although it it looked like I was living. Yeah. But I would walk in walk into the house and I would be like no. Nah, sure. These people are way better off without me. Sure. My husband will take these kids mm. and they'll be fine mm. if I'm gone. Mm. And I had to do the work guys. I had to do the work of firstly acknowledging the fact that i identify that it's a generational curse yeah and generational curses cannot be healed by panado unfortunately mm. i wish because paracetamol is my favorite mm. thing in the house <laughs> you know mm. but i had to go back sure. and name those altars mm. and break them and rededicate my life my children my marriage and everything to the throne of grace so that i can start healing from that point mm. cuz healing from a 
from an altar from the kingdom of from the point where the altar of the kingdom of of darkness was speaking was very hard. Yeah, it was pressing mm-hmm. against pressure. But once my mind finally came to the truth that there's a throne of grace, there's a throne of mercy that you can actually heal from, mm. it changed sure. instantaneously. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So we're good so now. Good. Yeah. Yeah. My fr- my my kids like they're obsessed with me. Oh. Yeah. That's amazing. And I think your story is one of obviously a lot of hurts, but mm. also restoration. Yeah. Also redemption. Yeah. Also saying, well, God can turn your purpose in your pain into your purpose, right? Yeah. And I think it's important that we don't, even though our trauma is so big and it's justifiable that yeah. you know we live in that place of just my trauma, my trauma, that it's important that we use it for good, that it's not, it doesn't just stay as a trauma, but it, you know, builds a new life into like more purpose. So what would you say to a viewer who says, I am struggling with my mental health and I go to church and I'm praying and I'm doing all the right things in terms of spirituality yeah but I'm still struggling but I'm also not just struggling with my mental health also with shame like why am I struggling with this I should be able to conquer this right um what would you say to that person I would say um there's like you said there's purpose in your pain Mm. and hold on to that Mm. and while you're holding on to that go to therapy Mm -hmm. because that helps you um navigate your own thoughts yeah how are you thinking outside of the going to church outside of you reading the bible how's your thought process Mm. how do you um react to certain things how do you you know what what are uh, what are things that you've normalized that are actually triggers of your brokenness you know um go to therapy because not because there's shame in it but because you're trying to live better for yourself Mm. um shame Man, shame is the devil's work. Yeah. <laughs> I've been saying this in this entire mm. channel, but shame, shame tells you that you are your mistake. Sure. And I'm just here to tell you that you're not. Mm. No matter how bad or far in that you think you are, like right now, I can tell you confidently that God is able, like God's hand is not short that he can't pull you out. Sure. And, he, and, and he doesn't just do the pulling he does the bringing closer as well. Mm. And he's there to embrace you in whatever thing that scares you about whatever shame that you are holding on to. You know, um, trust God with your pain because as Christians, we don't. Yeah. We think we do. Yeah. Allow God, allow, the key word is allow God mm. to love you in your pain so that you no longer see yourself in the shame. Um, yeah, and God is for you sure. in your mistake in your trauma yeah he's for you sure. and yeah that is so good so good <laughs> okay rapid fire question yes your purpose project or beauty of transparency beauty of transparency okay i see you now that you s- you said this comes from this yeah. it makes a lot of sense yeah okay the beach the beach or the bush beach why because i'm afraid of creepy crawlies Okay, that's true. But you, like, do you like swimming? Do you swim in the beach? I, I do swim. I don't like swimming, but you gave me two options. And I don't <laughs> like creepy crawlies. And I don't like snakes. Yeah. Child. Okay, <laughs> I get you. Prayer or reading God's word? Prayer. I talk a lot. Okay, okay. Same, actually. Um, your marriage or your children? Child. You gotta choose. Don't quote me on this. Okay. But your children are your relatives. Nah. <laughs> Wait, what? Your children are your relatives. Yeah. Like, right now, if 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 I was to go to, if they were going to varsity, I'm yeah. left with who? Yeah, that's true. That's I true. have no choice but yeah. to choose. Exactly. No, I yeah. get you. I get you. Don't worry. <laughs> How would you describe yourself in three words? Yeah. I would say, I would say, I would say, what do I say? I think I am... Um, confident okay i think i am very sarcastic true and i think i would say compassionate okay okay i think that's that those are nice ones um how would you want to be remembered 
man, if you fall, if anything happens and you don't remember anything about me, just remember that I was pursued in my mess and sure. still was given the crown of glory. Sure, that's all good. And then why should people come to confronting your brokenness? Child, because all y'all are broken. <laughs> that, that's the truth. <laughs> Like, no one's going to tell me. Like, I know people's like, I don't have childhood traumas. But mm. we all need healing. Mm. We all need Jesus. Mm. And we all need to see that we are not alone going yeah. through whatever we're going through. Whether you're single, whether you're married, engaged, or on your way out mm. of your marriage. This is a place where God's going to meet you at your point of need. Mm. And literally, directly speak to the things that you can't even talk about. So. Sure. I don't see why not y'all not coming. Mm. Please tell them about it. Oh, so we're having um, a Confronting Our Brokenness conference on the 11th of February, 2023. It will be held at the Mandaba Hotel, always. Ooh. So, yeah, there's a lot of food there. A lot of food. <laughs> um, a lot of good food. I know they make good food. Mm. So it's just it's a relationship seminar mm -hmm. uh, under the theme Healing and Mental Health. So we're looking at both the ex aspect of healing spiritually and, you know, the the physical and emotional side of it. Mm -hmm. So we have therapists, we have pastors, we have people who are married, we have singles, we have people who are divorced on the lineup, we have people who are um, divorcing, mm -hmm. we have people who are just trying to figure out if this marriage thing is for them. Mm -hmm. But essentially the gathering is to to open up a safe space, a healing altar for yeah. families because in as much as i'm healing myself i'm not doing it only for myself but also for generations that come after me sure. so come through and drink from the well of healing sure that is so good <laughs> so good everyone should go i promise i was going to go but i can't because it's my mom's birthday um bring your mom with <laughs> but but really everyone should go i think yeah. this felt like i think you really carry an anointing for healing like i can feel it even as i am sitting oh. right here that it just feels like such a space that's open that's vulnerable and i would like to say to you thank you so much for coming you are needed in this generation you are such a gift to this generation one for healing um that is going to inspire like a lot of transparent conversations in marriages, singles, divorce, people who are divorcing. We need people like you in the kingdom of God who will say, I am struggling with one, two, three, four, five, but I still believe that God's word says one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, please do follow Tisezo on Instagram. Please check out her YouTube channel as well. It's Tisezo Selekwe, right? Yeah, right? And then Tisezo underscore K, K. yes, yeah. underscore K on um, Instagram, but I'll write it all in the show notes because I'm a show notes girl now. I am a new year, new me. Hello. <laughs> so yeah, um, guys, thank you so much for reaching here. If you have made it here, post those little leaves that have like a, you know, that emoji, post that for healing and the vibes and greenery and stuff like that. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, share this video. Bye.